Hello, welcome to Java Programming Tutorials, Chapter 8, Part 1, Control Statements, brought to you by Angpro Technologies. My name is Harish. So in this session, we are going to learn about the control statements in Java. So in Java, there are three categories of program control statements. They are selection statements, iteration statements, and jump statements. If, if, else, if, else, if, and switch statement come under the selection statements, for iteration statements, I have a separate things like for while and do while loops and coming to the jump statements we have two keywords they are break and continue so in this session we are going to understand about the selection statements they are if if else if else if and switch so without wasting much time we are going to learn right now about the selection statements so to do that let me create a project java project the eclipse so let me open the eclipse right now here is my eclipse so i need to create a file I click on the file then i need to create a java project Okay, I'll go, I'm going to name the project as control statements. Okay, then I'll click finish. So right now it has created me a project control statements. You can observe very clearly here. To that I'm going to add a class. So right click on that project, then I'm going to add a class and I'm going to name it as okay uh, iteration statements. Okay, or let me check out like what is the thing we're going to learn. Yes, it's a selection statement. So I'll name the class as selection statement demo. And I'm going to add a main method, then I'll click finish. So once I do that, it's going to create me a class called selection demo. Okay, with okay, with the main method I have here. So I'll just delete that and now to control S. So let me show you a demo of if so int i is equal to 10 so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tell like if the value of i okay is equal to equal to 10 okay then what it has to do is okay, it has to it has to print on the console screen so system dot out dot it's going to print okay to print the value of i so I do control s now I'll run this program I'll click ok on this button so you can observe here in the console window it's going to print 10 if the value of i is equal to 10 suppose I'll change the value of i to 20 so now when I run the program what's gonna execute so okay right now you can observe we did not get any output so if the condition is true this block is going to get executed if the condition is not true then we have to execute the other block that is else block so control C I'm going to tell you okay the, if the i is equal to 20 then it's going to print here if not okay invalid input I'll tell like invalid input okay now when I run the program you can observe we'll get the output as invalid input because the value of i is 20 and 20 is not equal to 10 so it's going to print this if the condition is passing here okay if the condition is passing 20 is equal to 20 then it's going to execute the block this block which is which is related to if else will execute only if the condition fails so now when I run the program it's going to execute 20 okay and this works very well so we understood like if else Okay, now we are going to understand the rest, rest of the things. They are if else if ladder. So now if you want to check the multiple conditions at that point of time, I'll go with if else if. So now the value of i is equal to 10, then do this. Okay, else, else if, okay, the value of i is equal to 20, then then I'm going to print the i okay similarly I'll check it for multiple things then finally I'm going to print else so here I'm going to tell like okay system dot out dot print it's if any of the conditions did not match then it has to tell like input is input invalid okay so now when I run the program it's going to print 20 because we have that condition checking here so if I enter something which is not 
then my condition checking 90 so what it's going to do is it's going to print like invalid input so if you have multiple conditions to check then at the point of time we have to go with if else if ladder okay and now we have some other okay thing in the selection statement that is switch so switch is similar to if else if ladder so in this in the else if ladder every time we have to make use of this else if else if but in the switch it's completely different we have something called case there so let, let me explain you that so let me remove this i hope you understood this one so now okay i'll go with switch i'm going to pass i okay your i can have a case okay if case is equal to one system dot out dot print ln okay the input as or Sunday or something like that if it is one it's going to print Sunday then we need to add a break okay anyhow in the coming session we're going to understand why do we need a break right now what I'll do is I'll just copy it's one it's two and this is case three and this is case four and I'm going to change the days here Monday and it is Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday okay now we have this thing and now I need to enter another thing default so there I need to enter this one telling like uh, invalid input So if user enters uh, apart from 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so I have to enter the other part, so I'm left with that. So it is Thursday, it is Friday, let me copy and let me paste it very soon. Yes, it's almost done. So it's case 6, it is... Friday so now when I run this program so the input now I'm going to give it as okay one so now when I run this piece of code so it's going to print Sunday in the sense it works similar like if else if ladder but the thing it's very sim very simple and it's readable and maintainable also that's the thing we have to use with you have to go with switch case if you want to check multiple conditions suppose if I enter other than the number case which is present here like above 7 so what it's going to return it's going to return telling us the invalid input you can observe very clearly in the console window below okay this is how okay we can work with the switch okay and also we learned like how to work with selection statements if else if, if else if else if ladder and the switch if else if ladder and the switch works the same but switch makes the code more readable and maintainable that's the reason we have to go with the switch okay and that's what we learned in the session about the selection statements. So in the next session, we're going to learn about iteration statements. There comes for while and do while loop. And in the jump statements, we're going to learn about break and continue. So finally, thank you for listening. Have a great day. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Langput Training. You can also like our Facebook page visiting this URL. You can also follow us on Twitter. For further reference, refer website. We are on LinkedIn too. Last but not the least, please don't forget to give the feedback. Thank you. Have a great day.